Good day everyone, I'm Arlene P. Sabong and I'm going to discuss about the energy sector, environmental issues, and technology intervention. The energy sector environmental issues are air, air pollution, climate change, water pollution, thermal pollution, and the solid waste disposal. There are two types of energy resources. We have the renewable energy and the non-renewable energy. The renewable energy often is referred to as clean energy that comes from natural resources and, or processes that are constantly replenished. The non-renewable energy comes from sources that will run out or will not be replenished in our lifetimes or even in many, many lifetimes. Under the renewable energy, we have the solar energy, wind energy, geothermal energy, hydropower, and bioenergy. While in non-renewable energy, we have the fossil fuels and nuclear energy. The solar energy is an energy from the sun, and it is the most abundant energy resource on Earth. The major solar farms in the Philippines are found in Batangas, Cavite, Pampanga, Ilocos Norte, Cagayan de Oro, and Bulacan. The wind energy or the wind power defines the process by which wind is used to generate electricity. The wind turbines transform, transform the kinetic energy in the wind into a mechanical power. A generator can transform mechanical power into electricity. The wind energy plant in the Philippines are found in Alocos Norte, Izal, Guimaras, and the Klan. Geothermal energy is heat within the earth. The word geothermal comes from the Greek word GU, which means earth, and therm, that means heat. Geothermal energy is a renewable energy source because heat is a continuously produced inside the earth. Geothermal energy in the Philippines are found in Leyte, Laguna, Sorsogon, Albay, Batangas, Negros Occidental, and North Cotopato. And do you know that the largest geothermal energy in the world is found in Leyte? Hydropower or hydroelectric power is a form of energy that harnesses the power of water in motion to generate electricity. We have the bioenergy or biomass. It is derived from the recently living organic materials known as biomass, which can be used to produce transport station fuels, heat, electricity, and products. Biomass energy is comparable to fuel in a way that it's combusted to boil water to supply steam, which will drive a generator. The advantages of renewable energy is first, it is a fuel supply that never runs out. Renewable energy is a zero carbon emissions. It provides cleaner air and water. It is a cheaper form of electricity and renewable energy creates new jobs. One of the disadvantages of renewable energy is it needs higher capital cost. Electricity production can be unreliable. Energy storage is a challenge. It has impacted by environmental conditions. Renewables still have car a carbon footprint. The non-renewable energy, we have fossil fuels. The fossils are made from decomposing plants and animals. These fuels are found in the Earth's crust and contain carbon and hydrogen, which can be burned for energy. An example of fossil fuels are natural gas. We have the Malampaya power plant. And coal, the largest, is found in the Semerara Island. And we have the oil. We also have the nuclear energy. The advantages of non-renewable energy is that we can prefer non-renewable supplies at almost any location. Non-renewables produce more power after the refinement process. Thousands of unique products come from non-renewables. The global economy depends on the presence of non-renewables. Non-renewable energy provides a stronger energy output. It is cheaper to obtain non-renewable energy than other resources. Non-renewable energy provides us with many of the tools we use every day. Our current infrastructure was built specifically for non-renewable energy. We can still produce clean energy from non-renewable products. Passive fuels are in encouraged 
more plant growth around the world. Disadvantages of non-renewable energy. Non-renewable energy lead to a high levels of pollution. Fossil fuels may not be available forever and non-renewable products can become the condition of political conflict. Fossil fuel combustion is dangerous to our health. Plants and animals face the same problem humans do with non-renewables. Non-renewable energy refinement destroys the environment. It is too cheap for us to walk away from this resource. The Department of Energy uh, formulated the Philippine Energy Plan of 2020 to 2040. The PEP reiterates the energy sector goal to, to a transformative direction towards attaining a clean energy future. It is formulated as a transformational plan to bring in more of the clean energy fuels and technologies that will dominate the portfolio of plans and programs for the next two decades. It will improve energy security and reliability, energy access and affordability of energy products and services. It continuously supports the research and development projects using alternative feedstock to augment domestic production and meet the supply requirement for the mandated biodiesel and bioethanol blends, which is in pursuant to the Section 5 of Biodiesel Act of 200692. The PEP also have programs and mechanisms that will help in curbing the greenhouse gas emission, like the per program portfolio standards, the RPS, the Green o Energy Auction Program, third, the Green Energy Auction Program, and the Net Metering. They are also part of the Sustainable Goals of UN. We are in the number seven of affordable and clean energy. The Philippines is a signatory to multi multilateral environmental agreements like the UN Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, the UNFCCC, the Paris Climate Agreement, and the Kyoto Protocol. And as part of Go Green programs of the country, we have implemented the PUB modernization, the use of electricity powered vehicles, and the low combustion in engine. And the world now is part of the technology intervention in mitigating the harmful effect of carbon dioxide dioxide in the greenhouse gas effect. The world is into the smart cities development. The future belongs to the smart cities. These smart cities have low power sensors and they, are, they have adopted the LED and the wireless network and mobile-based application. The, the Scandinavian countries, like the, Copen, the Denmark, they already have, in Copenhagen, they already have the smart city communities, and they are embracing the green energy public transportation, they are more into bicycles and environmentalism as keys to the urban system sustainability. But most importantly to combat or mitigate the negative effect of the non-renewable energy We should always remember that, uh, that despite the many advantages of this renewable energy, the best way to lower our carbon emissions is to reduce our electricity and gas, gas consumption and the citizens' involvement. Everyone should be involved in promoting the Go Green project. And this way we will be successful in uh, the sustainable development agenda of the country and or the global
program. And that's all for my report. Thank you and have a good day.